right, here we are, back in um, the fourth section now. We kind of, I kind of smushed together layers and styling, um, kind of in, without making it super clear that we were moving from one to the other. Uh, but they kind of melt together anyway, because as you start to understand layers, you inherently start to understand some of that styling. So now that we're kind of under, now that we kind of, you know, have it under our belt, how Mapbox Studio is linked with Mapbox GLJS in terms of these layers and the styles, and then the different types of paint properties and layout properties that you can apply um, on the fly or when they load or whenever you want. <coughs> now we'll talk a little bit about how you can actually detect the different events. Um, obviously, you know, I'm already assuming that you have some JavaScript knowledge coming to this, so you probably already are perfectly aware of all typical events um, in, in the browser. Normally, click events and mouse down and hover and all these kinds of things. Uh, it's worth going over just a little bit some of Mapbox's idiosyncrasies and also how you can attach events to different elements within uh, Mapbox. So let's take a look at the little screenshot here. I have no idea why I have these silly graphics. I think they just came with this slideshow, but they're kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, they seem standard. At first, we have our clicks and our hover and our mouse overs and stuff like that. Um, a rendered features function is cool. Well, there's basically different ways to tell when things have rendered or when things are loading, when styles are changing. There's actually a huge array of events that we're going to be looking at. I have personally found a few issues with the mobile events, particularly in the different tapping um, slash like clicking, but when it comes to mobile, um, I wasn't quite able to get some of the proper events firing on layers um, with mouse down or click or um, touch down events. So you may, you know, keep that in mind as you're working with Mapbox. You may, you know, probably by the time you're watching this video, this is updated and it may be working better, but make sure you are checking your mobile stuff. Um, yeah, we have some, since we have some special things in Mapbox, we have a few special events such as pitch and zoom and obviously zoom end. It's a, we've gone over that, but pitch end as well. So, you know, when, whenever the user is changing the view. Uh, we also have load, which we've seen um, in order to add manually a style or a layer to the map. We have to do it after the map fires off a load event. Let's go look at the map box events. Let's see. So okay, we have all our typical stuff. Resize the map, mouse down, okay. So we do have our touch events as you see here. As I said, I found them to be a little bit buggy. We have some things like move, start. Now, whenever the user is changing the view in Mapbox, we're going to have an event fired on start while it's happening and at the end. Most of the time you're going to want to attach to the end, you might run into some bugs because the move fires uh, very fast. And the move end is, is fairly reliable at the, at the end of it to get the user data. So we have drag, zoom, rotate, pitch, box, zoom, slightly different than zoom. Just look into the details if you're getting into the weeds that much. Um, now style data loading, yes we do not have the style loaded that I put here. I wish we had had that. but when styles um, change, because you can change the style uh, in Mapbox, um, it, it kind of refreshes the whole map and you need to be able to detect when it's finished loading. So that's a bit of the um, issues that we're going to run into. So for instance, why don't we go back to our map and uh, load it up here. All right, so we load it up and we got our funny little situation going on here. And we're going to remove our layout thing, but we have this event already working here, map load. Okay, so that's great. Now let's try out a different event. I'm going to put the map on render event. Let's see how that affects some of what we're doing. So let's console log. You can see it's it's it renders it runs that as we can see continually as I am moving around and things are loading and thing other things are loading so render can be a very useful one because you often need to detect when things are loaded in order to do certain work with the data um, with that that's on these layers um, but so it can be quite useful but also obviously dangerous because it runs constantly. So uh, we're going to be dealing a little bit more with render in the next section when we actually are working with the data. Uh, <clears throat> but I just wanted to point out that render is an important one that you may run into. 
We've already seen zoom end. It's not uh, too complicated. Let's look a little bit about how we can attach. Let's say we needed to have a click event happen on these. Obviously, they are actually coming from Mapbox itself, which is a little bit weird. It's like we're not actually loading them, but we need to attach certain click events to it. So let's see if we can figure out how to add that. So if we have mouse down, that, that's essentially what we're looking at. I guess we could put click. That's a little more accurate. One thing they don't tell you here is that you can actually add it to a specific layer as well. So if we remember that we had it place label other, so that's our, our specific layer. So let's make a mouse down event here. Map dot on mouse down, first of all. And then we're going to add place label other. Okay, and then we're going to function. And we're actually going to pass the event in. Oops, pass in the event. All right, let's see how that works. So we uh, load up the map. All right, and uh, see here. Oh, and yep, and when we don't click on one of those, we can see there are render calls because uh, it's just rendering constantly. But the actual click event itself is only popping up when we actually touch one of those layers. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we can actually attach it specifically to a layer only. So that prevents um, you having to do extra checks. Because for instance, we could do it like this. And let's look at what the event is that passes back when I click. So um, let's get rid of this render. It's kind of annoying. There we go. All right. Now when I click on the map, we get an event or some, some information from the event. We get our original event, which of course is useful for various reasons. Um, but in here we get a long lat, very useful. There's a little bit of information provided here, but we actually have some events or some methods we can use to get a bit more information. So let's try query rendered features. So we have an example here of query rendered features, um, which grabs all the information under a specific point. So that's a useful one to have. You can you could imagine implementing that in a few ways. So if we get all the features, then we not only have the event, but actually some information about them. So if we open this up, this is going to provide maybe more information you might expect. Um, so under here, we actually have the land use of the park, which is kind of cool. It's not just the additional information we added. It's also water bodies in this case. I think I probably clicked it, water. As well as here, we actually have our place label. Now it doesn't get both in this case, but often it will um, get both all the layers that it is uh, finding. So you can even see it gives some of the information about it right there. So this actually does have information we can use uh, when we look at doing data works. You can see even the geometry is in there. So that's really nice to have and that makes uh, what you can do after the event much much easier. All right, so how about, let's do something fun. Let's try, when we click on a park, we're gonna try changing the color of the park. So, oh, there we go. We got um, our two features. So you can see here, if I was trying to figure out the park issue, um, it's giving me just one there, but it did give me two. I'd have to actually find, uh, I'd have to loop over this and identify, is it a park? Is it land use park? Well, what I could say is actually just make, um, put this on here and have that be much easier to use. Okay, and let's change this to click land use park and then we get our feature underneath and then we're going to be able to maybe change the the um, data involved there with our map.setLayout property. So we could say da 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 we're going to set this we have this feature, we already have land use park and when they click on it, then we're going to change the, what is it? Fill dash color, fill dash color to black. All right, so when we click on it, let's see what happens. Oh, set paint. That's uh, not a layout property, that's a paint property. Let's try that again here. And they should all change. That's kind of cool. So we hooked into some information that's already in there, um, set up an event on it, and then on that event, you know, we did did just like a basic thing with that. 
and it's a little easier when you set it up on the actual uh, thing itself, even though it doesn't actually specify that in this part of the Mapbox GLJS API. Now we just looked at this um, query rendered features, and we're going to look at that more in the next section.